I start my sketch by really mapping out the composition and I use this to trace over onto the final paper which is um, an arches paper and I also use this opportunity to like tighten up and adjust the composition. Next comes the first watercolor wash. So my objective here is to lay everything down and stay relatively light, um, but also just kind of map out wherever there's light and shadow in the piece and get a sort of nice like color variation in each form of each veggie. Now, as I'm doing the cilantro, first of all, it's always so nice if you have like the real ingredients or the real subject matter in front of you. I feel like it makes such a big difference. For the cilantro, since it's kind of uh, almost like a floral element of the piece that binds it together, I try to get as close to the finished product as possible, so um, I have a pretty saturated green going on. It's really not too watered down, um, and I also really play around with like the lights and the shadows and the different tones of green, so when this dries, all I really have to do is add the stem and we're good to go. Here, I decided to give you guys an idea of what it looks like when I'm painting in real time. I feel like we get a false sense of like <laughs> competency sometimes when we watch these sped up paintings. In reality, a painting like this takes me a really long time. I don't rush myself because I find that if I'm not feeling it, um, that's where I start to make like hurried mistakes, um, which is bad. Now, sometimes we just don't have everything we want to paint at our disposal. And in these cases, obviously using um, like Google image search is great. And I did that loads during this piece. Um, so here we're moving on to the delicious tiny corn tortillas. Here in Austin at least, like when we're talking about tacos, um, we're definitely talking about like the smaller kind of bite size, almost like three to a serving taco, and you always get a choice of corn or flour tortillas. So for this recipe, I did decide to go with corn, and they were delicious. So I'm kind of joking here when I say be the shallot, but but not really. Like I actually do find that getting the essence of something is the best way to go about painting. So when I get reference images, I really don't pay too much attention to the exact details and I try to just sort of capture uh, the essence of the shallot, if that makes sense. So here with this um, avocado shell, skin, whatever that's called, I'm putting in a little bit of uh, dark blue. This piece is really overall a very warm piece, so I thought that this would be sort of a nice um, opportunity to put a little bit of cool in there. And also, I find that um, I personally don't like using black with an illustration like this, um, so I kind of achieved like the darker tones by just mixing um, brown with blue, which I think works really well. So now we come to the point where the first layer is all done and we start on the second layer of the piece. Now this 
is completely experimental. When I sketch forms, I tend to put these kind of flowy lines anyway. That's just how my hand moves. And I thought that it would be kind of fun to sort of use that as points of interest and almost like shadows um, creating the form and stylizing the veggies a little bit. And I think um, it turned out pretty well. Not only that, but I just really enjoy painting like these kind of uh, precise things like this. So it was quite delightful. Now the lime is something that I practiced quite a few times. I feel like there are so many ways that you could go about painting a lime and I wanted to make sure that I was achieving the right balance between realism and the kind of st stylistic method that I'm using to paint this. So I don't want it to be hyper real, um, but I still want that like nice sort of detail feeling in there. And just going around and doing the same thing to um, all of the veggies that get this extra layer of detail so um, making sure that I don't overdo it on the vibrancy and saturation of the colors um, but also just having enough to where they don't get washed out and kind of blend in with the rest of the piece, so each little piece should kind of stand alone. And on um, select ingredients, I also add a layer of texture, like these tacos, um, these uh, or taco shells, tortillas I mean. <laughs> they were really looking like potatoes before I went in and did this, so um, I think that this helped. And here I don't use reference images, I just try to kind of stay loose and just own like whatever I'm doing. Um, and. In the end, I decided to put a third wash on a couple of things. Actually, I think the third wash only went onto um, the butternut squash because I felt like it needed just a little bit more saturation in some places. And I also felt like it needed sort of like a binding element um, for like the points of shadow and um, stuff like that. The way that I almost always finish my watercolors these days is with colored pencil. Um, so in this case, I will say that the cold pressed watercolor paper is not very conducive to getting a nice colored pencil line, but I just kind of own that. I feel like it's fine. So I go in um, and I add any detail needed with colored pencil. So it's like particularly good to add those delicious little burnt bits on the tortillas, the veins of the cilantro, and um, any sort of like additional shadow that each vegetable could benefit from. And finally, I'm adding the name of the recipe. So 
This is roasted butternut tempeh tacos organized neatly in a nice uh, circular flat lay. some tacos of their own, do let me know.